unmute yourself and ask any question because now is the time to ask a person that knows more than me about self-care, about how to recover yourself and also kind of like optimize your performance as well because the more you take care of the recovery and the self-care, the better is going to be also the, the results that you're looking for because it's not just hard work. It needs to be half and half. All right? So just make sure to, to ask, to take notes because it's about uh, learning as well from other people. All right? So... Lauren, now the, the talk is all yours. And uh, yeah. if you need me, uh, just give me a shout. Yeah. Cool. All right. Cheers, Amir. Cool. Hi, everyone. Hello. I'm um, so I'm also a personal trainer like Amir. Um, but I decided to start a company about a year and a half ago, um, specializing in self-care, burnout recovery, rest and recharge. Um, after I had it myself. So I was, I think, 21. Um, I just graduated and I I think it was just at the beginning of the pandemic. So I was working full time as a personal trainer um, and trying to stay afloat like most people were. So like trying to figure out how to bring in money, how to work, how to stay fit, how to juggle life. Um, and I found myself just getting deeper and deeper into this feeling of exhaustion. Um, and kind of thinking is this really what it's meant to feel like being a young adult like am I meant to feel this sort of over it already I was just constantly tired um, and I'll talk a bit more about the symptoms in a minute but I decided to kind of start looking into what what was going on um, and why it felt almost um, just continuous and getting worse so yeah, I dug into burnout and that's when I started I went into a rabbit hole of learning about self-care rest and recharge um and yeah so I've got I've put together almost like a um uh just an information point that we can go through that's going to take us through what is burnout um what it can feel like what it can look like and if it's of any benefit teach you about sustainable self-care so not not what you might think of as um self-care but yeah just go through it and if you've got any questions just let me know okay um so let me just see if I can press so I can ma maximize this. Now, can you still see me if I click present? Can you still see me? Yeah, cool. Okay, I can still see you. That's good because I thought I wasn't going to be able to see any of you. Cool. So let's talk about burnout um, and what it is. So I wanted to ask if any of you guys knew what burnout was or if you've experienced what you think of as burnout. So if you've like, if you felt some of it, maybe raise your hand, just like, yeah, cool yeah cool okay pretty pretty understandable so I would be super impressed if everyone had made it past the age of 25 without feeling some symptom of burnout or the pandemic for that fact okay because I feel like even if you're good maybe the pandemic brought on some symptoms or something that would have made you feel you know the stress okay so let me just move this down so I can see the whole screen Oh, there we go. You're at the bottom. So what is the technical? So this is like the dictionary definition of burnout. So before we get into why we should be actively trying to present it, um, I want to take you through like what the actual technical definition is. So is that gonna let me go that way. Ooh. Um, so burnout is defined as chronic stress, and this can be brought on by lifestyle factors, mainly from work um, and interpersonal relationships. So your friends, family dynamics, romantic partners, um, just sustained periods of high stress, essentially. And that can be from your environment, your lifestyle, anything. And generally it's characterized by three dimensions. So three different things that we can, if you've got these, you've probably, you're heading towards burnout, okay? So number one is feeling exhaustion more than you're feeling energized. So this can be, um, Gem, like waking up and feeling exhausted before you've even done anything um and two can be distance or increased distance or loss of interest and a passion for the things that you used to or usually care about so I don't know if you've ever had it where like something you used to really like just starts feeling really difficult um sometimes that can be your training um so you know you, you start with this thing that you're really into you can see it's really good for you it makes you feel good but after a period of time we're like oh really um 
and that you know that can even be things like socializing that can be things like being with your family sometimes that can feel like too much and that's usually a red flag so when the things you love start to feel difficult um and the third is cynicism so feeling angry more often um feeling more irritable than usual and negative about the things that you perhaps used to think more positively about so just having less of a tolerance for the world around you um and I'll come on to this so the they're the kind of technical definitions that um are given but I want to talk about the kind of real life lived experience from people that I've worked with myself on burnout and then also myself included and things that you might recognize in yourself. So I was just touching on that point a minute ago, um, waking up and dreading to get out of bed to repeat the day. So that kind of like, oh, OK, let's go again. Um, this shouldn't be normal. And I've I've highlighted this a few times when I go through these points in the next few minutes. Like I'm going to keep alliterating that that these things don't need to be your life. They don't need to be um, the norm of like your adult life. You know, I think a lot of people get comfortable, you know, they go, well, this is just life. But it doesn't need to be, I don't think, from what I've learned. Um, another thing that I've spoken to a lot of people about, so small things becoming highly irritating, loud noises. So like, I don't know if you've ever had it where you're at work and like someone breathing too loudly might send you over to the edge or like someone chewing too loudly or just small things like you getting your back up really easily like small things just pushing you over your tolerance or making you feel angry and um upset in some way over things that aren't don't or shouldn't really matter that's another really big indication that your your body is is running up here um so yeah, your tolerance to minor e inconveniences are affecting you more than normal. So when I was burnt out, I remember that someone spilt my coffee and usually I'm a really nice person. But at the time I was unknowingly burnt out and my tolerance was like zero. And in that moment, I was I was literally ready to go to war. I was like, what? why has this happened? And it's such a ridiculous thing to be angry about. But again, this shouldn't be normal. And I found that like more and more of my day was feeling difficult and tricky um and yeah again this shouldn't be normal so these are just some sort of like common experiences and I found that training started to feel more like a chore than a privilege um and I think that's really important to note that when we stop prioritizing our rest and our recharge the thing that we want to do most or the thing that we know is going to benefit us ends up acting as more of a stressor so your body doesn't know the difference between training being really good for you and I don't know a lion running towards you it's stress so when we go in and apply more stress and we haven't rested enough it's going to feel difficult it's going to feel um it's not going to feel good for your body because it's not at that point so we need to make sure that we're creating the space and time for rest and recharge so that the things that actually do benefit us still benefit us um if that makes any sense um yeah let me go into this next bit so the sneaky build-up um burnout is super sneaky <laughs> it creeps into every aspect of our life and you don't wake up one morning with burnout uh, it doesn't work like that you don't just wake up and you suddenly you've got burnout um your life just slowly becomes harder and harder to manage and enjoy if you don't manage your stress, your rest and your recharge properly. So this is because from chronic low levels of stress, which is essentially like your body being ready to fight or flight, um, it becomes draining. So to survive, your body begins to say, we're going to pull back on all non-essential things to focus on. Um, and we're going to make everything other than survival difficult because you need to focus on on yourself right now. You don't you don't need to be focusing on dealing with Janet talking to you or um, training. That's why would you want to do that when you're tired? You know, it, it's trying to make you focus on the bare minimal surviving. And that's why often like the only thing you want to do when you begin to burn out is sleep, eat, if that. Um, and yeah, it doesn't need to be as drastic as that, but your body begins to pull you back from the things that you do daily that you should be enjoying but you can't um hustle culture cool has anyone got any questions at this point because i'm fully aware that i am just like pa 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 so has anyone got any questions no good okay 
cool. Amir, you good? You look like you're going to ask something there. Yeah, cool. Um, so hustle culture. Hustle culture, I've got like a issue with because I have been in it and I'm as a person very driven and agree with the eth like the the concept of hard work and putting in hard work to get where you want to go especially if you come from somewhere where you know you start from the bottom I've I've seen myself grind and pay off from hard work but there's a problem with hey yes sorry go for it Daniel you good let me uh, I can't hear you mate sorry Am I, have I got, oh, I've got a chat. Sorry, I didn't realize there was one. Let me just have a little look. Dan, you need to unmute yourself. Oh, <laughs> cool. <laughs> no, all good. I thought <laughs> I thought you had a question, but that's all good. Hey, um, cool. Okay, so um, yeah, so there's, I agree with the concept of hard work and putting in what we need to, to get where we want to be, especially when it comes to things like fitness and achieving your fitness goals. But hustle culture is the kind of is the culture that glorifies exhaustion, that glorifies like wearing your exhaustion as a badge of honor. Like, yeah, I haven't slept and I'm still training <laughs> like that kind of. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's the only way to describe it is glorifying something that eventually stops you from being able to work. And I don't know if you've any ever heard that uh, sleepers for the dead or, you know, to grind. We must grind until we've got nothing left. And, you know, you just got to keep going. And I I agree with working hard, but I agree more with work harder. Uh, sorry, work smarter, not harder. Um, and and this is where I think um, that the hustle culture actually forgets something. And that is that we show up better for ourselves and everyone around us when we do create time for rest and recharge. So we produce better work when we're rested um, and we work out better when we're rested. That's a really good example of, it's like a clear as day example with, um, with training. So if I was to say, don't sleep tonight, but try and do a deadlift session tomorrow, your deadlift session is gonna be rubbish. You're gonna get it done, but it's gonna be rubbish. And Whereas if I said, have a really good night's sleep, really look after yourself tonight, the chances are that your quality of work, your output tomorrow is going to be so much better. And I think we kind of get confused with like the idea that you can you can still work hard with but also look after yourself in that process. It doesn't it doesn't need to be this kind of like go all the way in and forget about yourself in the process. Um and yeah, we're a better friend, we're a better mother, we're a better brother when we're rested. Um, so why is it so hard to make time for rest and recharge? And many people say to me, they're like, the most common thing is I just don't have time. And I totally hear that because we live these lives that are so constantly on. So we live these lives where like, you are constantly on your phone from the minute you wake up, you've got people emailing you, you go to work, you're communicating, you leave work, you're communicating, and then you're socializing, you know, you're documenting whatever you're doing, or you're looking after your family, and it's constant. But if I told you that scientifically, you only need five minutes per day to switch off your uh, fight or flight response, you can turn off, turn on your PNS system. If you only needed five minutes per day to bring yourself out, and return you can go back to your job your family your life whatever more focused and ready to deal with what's ahead suddenly self-care doesn't seem like this daunting thing um and I don't think it needs to be it can be short moments so we spend yeah so we spend so much time on our screens and devices that stimulate our brains um outside of our work so we go to work and then we're on these things that continue that spike of adrenaline of stress essentially we often leave little time outside of our jobs and family to naturally switch into our pns which is our rest and digest response so our pns stands for our parasympathetic nervous system so that's what's triggered when you eat your food and you can feel yourself relaxing it's that when your body uh, switches off from kind of every external thing and focuses on resting recharging regenerating now usually in like a nap prior to the digital world and prior to like the kind of modern day lifestyle there's a lot more time in the day where that would naturally be switched on so having conversations with 
your loved ones or um, just being bored, sitting and doing nothing, breathing, that is all things where your body goes, it's safe to relax is times where usually we'd be reducing those cortisol levels in the body. Um, but because of the lifestyles that we live at the moment, there's very little time where we leave space to just stop and let the mind slow down. Um, and we've actually trained ourselves to be really uncomfortable with that as well. So a lot of people really don't know how to sit with themselves and just be for five minutes um, because it's we're so used to being on. Uh, so what I've done the research on, what I've come to the conclusion is in the simplest way possible, that one of the best things that we can do to uh, take more time for ourselves, to reduce those chronic symptoms of stress, to improve our performance, to improve our relationships, to live life with more enjoyment and less angst, um, is prioritizing what I call short moments. Now, this is where we get our system to relax. We get our body to switch into um, the PNS and we can reduce chronic stress symptoms and get better back to functioning better. Um, and it doesn't need to be a spa day. And this is where I'm kind of trying to change the narrative with women that I work with, men that I work with. It doesn't need to be a girly day out. It doesn't need to be a whole afternoon booked off. It doesn't need to be a bath it doesn't need to be anything that you think of as self-care it can be it can be five minutes where you're focusing on being present and that can include a list of things um which I'm just going to go through now but it doesn't need to be what you are kind of sold as a self-care um so these are just literally a few ideas that I know from research uh, super effective for triggering specifically that PNS so getting yourself to come out of um, that state of stress and into that re rest and relaxation rest and digest response rather so literally as simple as setting a timer on your phone breath work in for four and out for six six specifically if your breath that if your breath that you exhale is longer than the breath that you inhale your brain is told that it's there's research around it but that your brain is told that it's safe to relax to turn on that rest and digest and that is enough within five minutes to bring your body out of a state of stress so just doing that on your break if you've got five minutes just focusing on the breath in for four out for six this can be really useful say for example i don't know you're training in the gym and you're in between if, I don't know what program Amir has put you on, but if you've got a long rest period, even just focusing on your breath during that time is a really great way to turn that on. Um, uh, number two, there's a lot of research around nature specifically, but being outside for even just five minutes. So on your break, um, in between meetings, when you first wake up, light exposure, there's so much science to back the benefits of natural light exposure, reducing cortisol in the body. But um, more specifically, like being in nature, there's, there's a study that shows that you need, this is a bit in depth, but um, lateral eye movement. So your eyes, when you're outside and in open space in nature, your eyes moving left and right without you running. So without you signaling to your body that there's any danger, signals the body again to relax. Um, so there's so much benefit to what we call like ecotherapy even if it's five minutes, it's going to be beneficial to you. There's just a few more of these. Um, so mindful eating is something that is really easy one to, for everyone to implement. Um, so this is spending time with your food and not your phone whilst you're eating. So naturally, this is where our our PNS system would kick in anyway. So where our relax system would come in. But because so many of us now will eat with our well, whilst we're eating with our phones on, that system isn't working because we're looking at something that triggers our stress response. So we're eating and we're not really focusing on our food um, and your body is still on high alert. So a really good way just to get into back into your body out of the stress is to focus on your food whilst you're eating it. Talk to the person next to you, whatever, but focus on what it is, not, um, not anything outside of it that's going to trigger your brain to start looking for a response for something to react to um and actually the final one is any activity that stimulates your senses so taste touch smell sight 
and hearing anything that stimulates your senses but mindfully and without the adren- the adrenal and dopamine response so and I put ask me about the dog study because it's really great can I tell you about a study that was done with um some dogs and doctors it was quite a interesting study um so there was this study done on three groups of doctors where they asked in their breaks they're trying to look for ways to effectively reduce the stress in people like er doctors nurses surgeons so they gave they split them up into three groups one group was given dogs to pet for five minutes just to get to cuddle dogs which you know great um group two was given mindful activities so things that um stimulate or relax the body um so things like uh coloring in writing journaling for five minutes and the other the last group group a was given nothing to do so they were just asked just to sit there for five minutes and de-stress and i don't know if anyone can guess which group was the most de-stressed by the end of it it was um it was of course the dogs so the people whose stress reduced the most out of these doctors was the dog group but this is because so much oxytocin was released so that's the love hormone as well as the cortisol dropping from being physical and mindful with the dog the second group was the mindful activity so this was the group that um focused on you know doodling doing something with their mind that allowed them to calm down that signaled to them that it was safe to do it um but still they were still doing something it just wasn't on a screen it was mindful but non-stimulating in a way that uh you know sort of provoked the brain into fight or flight and the final group actually their stress increased from sitting so from doing nothing at all from just sitting and being told to de-stress their cortisol actually rose because they were probably thinking about things like their work their responsibilities everything in the future so what it showed is that everyone should have a dog but b um that choosing to do something downtime five minutes of mindful activity in whatever way feels good to you that isn't a screen that isn't uh about your work that isn't about something that makes you um anxious is going to be beneficial in reducing that level of stress in your body and bringing you into a better place in yourself um So conclusion is to make time for your rest and recharge because it's going to benefit every aspect of your life, your training, your family, your relationships. Um, And it doesn't need to be a big deal. It doesn't need to be uh, a whole afternoon booked off where you must go and de-stress. It can be as simple as spending five minutes with your furry friend. It can be as simple as breathing for five minutes it could be as simple as walking outside but the important thing is that you do it because we don't have enough time in our day at the moment where we switch off and that's a problem we're just always 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 up here and if you make more time just to come back down regular short moments you're going to find that the overall symptoms of the burnout the stuff that we see from um being chronically stressed those symptoms will start to dissipate a little bit as the body begins to recognize that you're not in fight or flight all the time you don't need to be in fight or flight all the time and then your body can get back to going okay that training is safe to do and I you know you can put energy into other things because your body recognizes that you're not continuously stressed and you're not going to be continuously stressed that's really important um and yeah, and then you're going to show up hopefully better for everyone around you. And I believe like my my main mission with everything that I'm doing. So I believe that you can be ambitious, you can achieve everything you want to achieve, but without burnout. And that's really, really important. So you can be ambitious without the burnout. Um, and that's important for everyone who I think is like driven and you know, holds themselves to a high expectation, who wants a lot for themselves, who wants a lot for their family. You can do everything you want to do, but just without the burnout, it's possible. And you can enjoy yourself without feeling absolutely, you know, completely stressed all the time. It's possible. I used to think I used to be like, is this really like what adult life is about? Like, is this just it? And I I really tried to challenge myself to see if I could create joy in my 